Good afternoon. Uh, today is the 7th of September 2011. I'm Daryl Peterson, a volunteer here at the Palm Springs Air Museum in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. Uh, today, we have the honor and privilege of interviewing uh, Willard Patridge, who was a navigator on a B-17 in World War II. And uh, we're going to talk to him about his wartime experiences and uh, a lot of other things. So, we're happy to have you here today, Will. Thank you. And uh, we'll uh, get this uh, set up a little bit different. And uh, can you start out by... Uh, uh, telling us your full name and spelling it and where you were born. My name is Willard Lee Patridge, W-I-L-L-A-R-D, middle name L-E-E, -E. surname Patridge, P-A-T-T-R-I-D-G-E, and I was born in a farmhouse in the township of Castile and uh, delivered by a mid midwife. And that was in uh, uh, the, what state was that in? What's this the, was in the state of New York. Okay, very good. And, uh, and what year was that? That was the year 1920. Okay. The interesting thing to me was the fact that this midwife had three sons, one of whom went through uh, Cornell Medical School and eventually was our family doctor. <laughs> well, but uh, that's quite a, quite a change then. <laughs> and uh, additionally, he delivered our son and some 20 years later, they uh, became bridge partners <laughs> and played in several tournaments. Yeah, it's a strange uh, the twists and turns that life takes, right? So uh, tell us a little bit about your mother and father. What uh, what was their ancestry and uh, what did they do? Well, my uh, mother's name was McClurg. I believe that was Scotch-Irish. My father's name was uh, Oh, Charles Ora Patridge, and uh, what uh, what countries were they from then? Uh, well, they uh, emigrated, so so to speak, from Connecticut uh, about 1902 to the so area the, where I was born. Mm -hmm. So the family had been in the U U.S. for uh, several generations before then? or uh, Well, uh, I'm not certain of that. No, it, it's uh, kind of gotten lost in the uh, history. I know of a relative, Isaac Bailey was his name, and uh, we had a Lindsay Woolsey bedspread with a date 1824 embroidered on it, hmm. which before I moved to Texas, we donated to the museum in uh, Mumford, New York. Hmm. So they've been in country quite a while. Well, my mother took quite good care of that bedspread uh, Family to <laughs> ward off the moth damage yeah. and so forth. Okay. So um, was this a, you s described it as a township, so uh, were, were, you, uh, were well, your family engaged in farming or were they city folks? Oh yes, we were, I'm sorry I omitted that. We were uh, in farming. My father was uh, in the sheep breeding business for quite a spell, and additionally he would uh, purchase feeder lambs from, well, 
mainly from Chicago, but they originated in in the West, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd use the produce on the farm, the hay and grain, uh, to feed them during the winter. And uh, at that time, uh, fattening animals was a premium, right. rather than the lean yeah. preferred now. So what what part of uh, New York State is is uh, well? This the, is located in western New York, uh, fifty five miles southeast of Buffalo, and forty miles almost south of Rochester. Yeah, so you have a bit of snow there in the winter. <laughs> Quite a bit of snow. Yeah. Uh, no Buffalo gets the lake effect and. Uh, it's some pretty heavy snows there, so uh, so to, uh, tell us about your experiences as a younger person then when you start well, going to school and uh, the first schoolroom that I was in was a rural one room school which handled uh, the teacher had several grades so forth right and uh, then we moved to the village of Perry, which was two or three miles from the farm that I was born on. And uh, subsequently I had uh, quite a bit of health problems, hmm. specifically with my ears. Oh. And that necessitated uh, more than one trip to Rochester Hospital uh, to have my ear drums lanced. <laughs> but then uh, my father decided that we should uh, move to Florida, uh, primarily Orlando, and that was where I went to junior high school and senior high school graduated. Mm -hmm. So this was, and I was right during the depression then. You were about uh, 10 I was, 12 years old uh, when the depression came. Uh, that's was that true. part of the reason why uh, your father changed uh, locations? or No, he, he still owned the farms, uh, but uh, my uncles took over the operation on a business agreement. Okay. And uh, so, what did he do in Florida then? Uh, well, he was also interested in the game of bridge. <laughs> <laughs> and he spent the mornings uh, at the brokerage office and the afternoons playing bridge, I think. Mm. So he was a Stockbroker? Uh, no, no, he uh, just invested uh, and had uh, stocks. Fair head on his shoulders and made good investments. Mm -hmm. So this was after this. This was during the uh, twelve years that we lived in Florida, and most of it was in Orlando. So it was right through the big stock market crash and all that. Oh, you, yes. You had good stocks that uh, didn't crash. <laughs> well, that was uh, earlier, I think, uh, in 1929. Yeah. To, uh, was so this was the uh, severe part. And uh, after that, uh, he, he, so uh, was he, he made uh, Wise investments, okay. we would say. Good. And uh, how about your mother then? She uh, stayed at home, I guess? She or was a homemaker and yeah. enjoyed baking, mm. which I enjoyed the product of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she was good at it, huh? 
So, uh, and did you have uh, brothers and sisters then? No, or? I was the only child. Oh, okay. So, uh, all right. So, uh, did you finish uh, high school then in the Orlando area? I finished high school in Orlando and uh, at first was uh, interested in becoming a medical doctor and uh, I attended Duke University. Uh, I recall at orientation where they had all the prospective freshmen gathered in the auditorium and they said to take a look to your left and take a look to your right and only one of you will be here at the end of the year. <laughs> Tough course. So uh, finally uh, uh, this took us to December 7, 1941. So you were like in the third year of college then? Yes. Uh, and uh, what was in 1942, well during this period I of course joined a fraternity, Delta Tau Delta, and met my future wife. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, This takes a bit of effort. This is Long time <laughs> some 60 ago. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but we, uh, you got married before I went over, went into the army, signed up uh, as a volunteer because I had visions of becoming a pilot, of course, mm -hmm. as a lot of my friends there before uh, successfully became pilots and uh, so you did you uh, oh well did you sign up right after de December 7th or how how soon uh, did you well make I believe the decision? Uh, it was in 1943 uh, the, it was either 1942 or 1943. Okay, so you continued to go to college? Uh, no, no, I, I uh, spent a year with my wife living with my parents and trying to get myself in some sort of shape. Oh. <laughs> we lived by a lake, the circumference of which was a mile and at the beginning, I was hard pressed to jog a city block, but I ended up being able to jog 11 times around the mm -hmm. lake. Wow. But that was no sort of preparation for the obstacle course <laughs> so the, that uh, I encountered in ba basic training. Mm -hmm. So you were doing this to uh, condition yourself for enlisting in the army? Is that the, yes? That's, that's what, what it amounts to. Okay. Yes. And uh, sometime in early 1943, I made a lonely trip by myself to Nashville, where I uh, took basic training, and then. We were uh, assigned the na navigator section. We're uh, assigned to uh, Salmon Field in Monroe, Louisiana. And uh, I recall the troop train that we were on uh, had old fashioned railroad passenger cars and of course no air conditioning and we raised the windows and gathered the benefit of the soot that <laughs> the uh, engine was burning. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that I remember, and there was a mess car that we attended meals at. I, I don't recall how long the journey took to uh, Monroe, Louisiana, but anyway, I spent several uh, months there. And and so uh, this was all uh, learning to be a navigator, or were you still yes, trying to navigate? Yes, navigation training then. Okay, you still. And then uh, we were uh, sent to Panama City, and subsequently to Apalachicola Gunnery School, and I, I think I received a marksmanship medal. Uh, which was required, I mean, minimum, not, yeah. not so, a sharpshooter by any means. So navigators at that time had to uh, take gunnery courses, so well, they the were B combinations. As it turned out, on the B-17, we had uh, two manually operated 50 caliber machine guns that we had to man along with other duties, of mm -hmm. course, yeah. uh, primarily uh, navigation, but we also were uh, instructed to uh, observe any enemy activity that we could see on the ground uh, during pilot mm -hmm. days. And a lot of the time, of course, you weren't able to see the ground, but yeah. And uh, as I recall, when we first uh, arrived at Framlingham, which was the base of the three ninetieth uh, bomb group, heavy which geographically was closest to the enemy. <laughs> hmm. And uh, I recall after having completed my missions and waiting for orders to return, possibly to be uh, assigned to the Pacific area. And the reason I mention that is uh, when I was assigned to Ellington Field near Houston, Texas, uh, one evening I was awarded a project of navigating, theoretically, on a simulator from uh, Hawaii to, and I don't recall the island, but it took the better part of the evening <laughs> to uh, give it a sense of reality, I mm -hmm. suppose. And uh, this was a checking of celestial navigation. And, uh, as I recall, my results were within three miles of the island, which uh, unless there was a heavy fog, would uh, a square search would <laughs> yeah. locate the island. Right, that's uh, pretty good for those days. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, in your write-up here, you mentioned that you had an interesting uh, trip going over to Europe. That you got to go on the uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, the first that. Yes. ship and uh, there uh, were some dignitaries on board. Do you want to tell us a little more on that? Well, I uh, observed uh, the current Secretary of State, I believe his name was Statinius, on the bow of the ship, the bow of the ship, and uh, uh, the boxer Joe Lewis was also among our soldiers. And they had him uh, give an address as to how to behave when we 
uh, arrived in England. Oh, he, Joe Lewis was the boxer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised that uh, he would be uh, telling about how to behave in England. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he was coached on that, probably. But, okay. Uh, and the I am backtracking a bit here now. We uh, were on the uh, Queen Elizabeth I, and uh, it was necessary to do a lot of evasive action to avoid U-boats and one of our navigators in the cabin that I was assigned shot a angle of the sun to get latitude and we figured that we were somewhere near the latitude of the Azores in this evasive action. Mm -hmm which I don't think would be approaching a great circle route. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, were you, was that a, a part of a convoy then that... Uh, no, 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 you no convoy. Going, by, going on uh, a loan ship? I uh, did have a friend who had been in the Merchant Marine and uh, had made the trip to Murmansk on the Lend Lease program, and uh, he was in the basic training phase, uh, but it had taken a toll, nervous, nervous. Being in the convoy, being and, and yeah. watching all the casualties mm -hmm. go down of those freighters. Yeah, there was a lot more than uh, you I might lost think track is. of him. I don't know what happened to him. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so I, I guess uh, they were zigzagging with the. Uh, QE2 or QE1, I guess, but um, did they say anything why they didn't go in a convoy? I'm curious. They did they think they were safer as a single ship, or they well, had the I, speed I don't know. to? Uh, I wasn't privy to that okay. information. I thought they might have uh, told you something. I uh, suppose they had measures <laughs> that, yeah. uh, that I wasn't aware of. So this was like, what, 43 though? Uh, yes. Or was it later than than that? No, this would be, excuse me, this would be 1944. Okay, so. The spring. Some of the uh, subs had been taken care of by that time probably. And oh, I imagine. You know, some left, but uh, a lot of them had uh, been caught up with. So. Uh, uh, tell us about the uh, missions. How many missions did you do from uh, your English base then? Well, as I, I believe I stated, uh, we uh, docked after navigating the Firth of Clyde. And uh, this was in the evening, uh, I believe, as I recall. But things looked quite drab there mm -hmm. <laughs> in that particular area. And uh, we were loaded on a train and uh, made our way to Framlingham, which became our home base. Uh, along toward the last of my tour, we uh, took, uh, we were part of a flight of about six B-17s that flew from our base to West England to pick up Glenn Miller and his orchestra. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, and they uh, 
gave a concert at our field and uh, within a day or two we had another mission and Glenn Miller who I believe at that time was a captain was admitted to our uh, briefing room so you get to meet him we didn't know we weren't able to to actually meet him. But okay. Let's have to see him close up. Huh? And, uh, it's uh, toward the last of the tour we were uh, on a mission to Hamburg, Germany which I believe was not successful in our bomb pattern, but always we uh, were fixating on the power stations of whatever factory that we were attacking, mm -hmm. because it would take longer to uh, repair that, of course. And then and uh, as I started to relate this mission to Hamburg, turned out that on our bomb run, we took a direct hit and uh, lost our hydraulic system. Uh, and I have to admit here that I was observing regulations in the breach. <laughs> I wasn't wearing my flak belt, flak vest. And uh, of course you didn't waste much time departing a plane that was on fire. Anyway, uh, we were still with the, the bomb bay doors open. The co-pilot hurried through the catwalk to the radio compartment to get the fire extinguisher and made the round trip. We were 25,000 feet at least mm -hmm. and uh, altitude. And he handed the fire extinguisher down to me, and I, and the fire was in the wiring and, as I said, the hydraulic system behind a firewall, as I recall, uh, between us and the pilot and co-pilot. And uh, I manned the fire extinguisher and acquired first and second degree burns and, and uh, any exposed area, mm -hmm. which mainly was hands and face. And uh, so this this we, was. Uh, damage from flak or was it from uh, this was from flak yes yeah. so this is on the bomb run itself uh, mm -hmm. which always seemed in term interminably long in which the bombardier was in control of the flight of course with the northern bomb site but anyway uh, Without the hydraulic system, we were forced to land at an emergency uh, British field, which had, as I think, a five mile runway, which would allow eventually to yeah. <laughs> stop well, the plane. Was this a base in France or in England? This was in England. Oh, okay. So you made it all the way back across the channel. Yes. 
and uh, and I guess you got the fire out and oh well uh, uh, did I leave that part <laughs> out <laughs> we extinguished yeah. extinguished the fire okay and uh, uh, the engines were all running and uh, so you continued back uh, towards I home huh? I think. Uh, at that time, the British had uh, developed uh, a lotion for to treat fire burns, and they promptly dab dabbed me with that and bandaged me all up. Uh, I looked like one of the figures in a horror movie. <laughs> mm. did, did you get burned? Did your face get? Yes. Oh boy. Uh, however, it was only first and second degree burns. So. Yeah, that's painful enough. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, I was ordered to a field hospital, which was really disheartening because at that time, this was after D Day, and this field hospital accommodated casualties from the beach landings mm. in Normandy. In the courtyard they had victims uh, in rows and you walked corridors between them. Mm. And I didn't feel that I was injured very severely witnessing that, but I was awarded a Purple Heart in any case. The only flack I ever took was a piece on my arm, the fat of my arm, which was that was still the quite uh, burns, fortunate. The burns were. Uh, on one, uh, I'm I'm having to backtrack a little in my memory here. That's fine. Uh, our crew was uh, one assigned to make the shuttle mission to Russia, to Italy, to England, and the evening before the flight, uh, I had a sore throat and I reported to the infirmary to have the flight surgeon paint my throat. <laughs> I thought it would best not to go with And he promptly grounded me and mm -hmm. another uh, navigator was assigned to the crew and I missed that flight to uh, Russia. And when I was in the field hospital as a result of the Hamburg incident, they had a second flight to Russia, and uh, I missed that too. Hmm. What was the purpose of these flights to Russia? Uh, uh, well, uh, I, I can't recall now. It was really at that time really classified information mm. and it wasn't a bombing mission then well was there probably was a, people a, a target on the way I imagine okay it so probably one would think that it was a target beyond which you couldn't uh, return okay. So one one way mission, right? Uh, not returning to the home base. Uh, okay, so they landed in Russia, then. Then they flew to, east. I believe it was the Eleventh Air Force that was in Italy. I can't recall for sure. Okay, and then back to England. Back to England. Okay. All right. So they they must have had some uh, <laughs> critical targets or the um, helping out the Russians on the Eastern Front somehow then. I know on one mission, our target was in Leipzig, and there were two uh, 
beings involved in this raid. The other target was Merseburg, and I recall the other group of planes peeling off to our starboard. And uh, I was particularly looking at one B-17, and all of a sudden I wasn't looking at it. Hmm. it of course, our bombs were armed that, at that time, and it was just a direct hit, hit and hmm. disintegrated hmm. the plane. On uh, another mission on return, uh, we saw a plane that was hit, and uh, we saw the crew bailing out. As I recall, only about seven shoots we counted, and of course the crew was made up of ten on the B-17. Tough days. I know uh, we had a two day pass once to London, and uh, the nearest railroad station was Ipswich, which was 25 or 30 miles from uh, our base. And we, our crew, got on this passenger car and for going into London it was unbelievable. The bombed out tenements and factories for miles and miles. And it's all unbelievable. Did you um, have work with the same crew members uh, throughout the? No, after the, I miss, missed that first uh, Russia. trip to Russia, yeah. I was in a pool then. And uh, one, <laughs> I recall one crew that I was assigned to, the uh, bombardier was from Brooklyn, and uh, he had the accent. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost impossible to uh, uh, understand him, <laughs> to interpret what he was saying. But anyway, he was unfortunate enough to receive a severe wound in his arm from flak over the target. And we uh, carried morphine first aid kits. And this was still on the bomb run, which was pretty exciting, <laughs> usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and I grabbed the uh, morphine and injected his arm. To make it more interesting, the last time I saw him was for reassignment in Miami Beach, yeah. and he came running up to me and he was with several others and uh, he was praising my uh, action at that time, which mm -hmm. most anybody would do, but That's I good, guess he uh, good to be was severe enough so that he appreciated the effects of the morphine, in other words. Right. Yeah. Well, nice to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Didn't hurt a bit. The, the fact was my wife was with me at the time. <laughs> oh, okay. well, she got to meet some of your buddies. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, 
Um, you were kind of sidelined for a while with your burns, and uh, th yes, then well, uh, they it wasn't possibly a week or something like that. Oh, okay. I'm I'm just guessing. I can't remember now for sure. And it, but right about then, the Germans gave up. Is that? Well, uh, no. Uh, was, after we, uh, the ones that I was familiar with. Uh, got back over from back to the, this country. The uh, Germans had developed a V one or V two rocket. I can't recall. Yeah, they had both. The V one was the one with wings, and the V two was the one with. Well, it was the V two then because rocket kind of thing. I had. Uh, a speaking acquaintance with two of the buzz bombs. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Once yeah. in a doorway in uh, London, and, and once after I'd completed my missions, waiting orders, and they uh, dropped uh, a buzz bomb uh, on our field, hmm. at least one. And we heard, uh, which was the propagandist, Axis Sally? That was one, I guess, yeah. And there was the guy, Lord something or other, I forget what his name is. Well, anyway, uh, we picked up their radio broadcast, of course, and, and uh, she wanted to know if we enjoyed the bomb visit hmm. the previous yeah. evening. <laughs> but I th think that's probably the bulk of what I recall. Okay, well, let's see. The, um, so uh, they shipped you back to the U.S. Did you, had you completed your number of missions or what was uh, I had completed the 35 missions, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, and so. there was a rather humorous uh, diploma, which probably would be censored a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, man which I have man. at home. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so... Uh, Got to come home for a while in Miami? The, the well, that was for reassignment, and uh, I was reassigned to Ellington Field outside of Houston. And where, where and was your uh, wife? Finally, pardon me? Where was your wife during the war then? Did uh, she uh, well, stay in uh, Florida? Uh, she was uh, in Florida, and she was from North Carolina. Okay. I met her at college. And mm -hmm. So did she find a job? I know a lot of women started working during that time. Did she uh, uh, no, start I don't working? So. Or, uh, no. She spent some time with my folks and then she uh, uh, made her way uh, by rail to uh, Durham with her folks. Okay. Although I did leave out one, are we still on? Yeah, we're fine. Uh, on one visit to London, I think there were two leaves involved. Uh, my brother-in-law was a crew chief on a B-24 Liberator bomber base at Norwich, in which the commanding officer was James Stewart, the movie oh, actor. Wow. But I didn't get to meet him. But I uh, grabbed a train and visited my brother-in-law. And he was, although he worked on B-24s, he was relieved to find out that I was assigned to B-17s. <laughs> I guess he thought they were 
more survivable as, as a yeah, there were different stories going around about the B-24 and uh, having problems and... Uh, but uh, we uh, used to have about a weekly review of what was happening in the various theaters of war on film. And I recall a B-24 in Italy returning from uh, its mission and the fuselage was missing forward of the tail. The only thing that looked like it was holding the plane together was like a floorboard and whatever <laughs> was there. Amazing. But it made it back to the field. Yeah. Wow. Lucky guys. Okay, so uh, you were sent off to Houston to be reassigned or uh, what? Well, how, I was how did that? I was uh, assigned a, a, a ground officer's job there as processing officer. The uh, captain that was in charge of that office was uh, I believe being sent to Japan He was looking forward to that, of course. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, that was a lot of excitement going on there, too. So, did you get sent into the Pacific at all, or? Uh, no, uh, no, you did, I didn't. You stayed in Houston there until the uh, uh, Japanese uh, conflict was over also then? Or? Well, we had a a group of Air Force personnel in a housing development in Pasadena, Texas, which is outside of Houston. And uh, on uh, VJ Day, Houston was an uproar. Mm -hmm. So we decided the best thing to do was to get together at a, one of our dining tables right. <laughs> in our homes, yeah. <laughs> which we did. So uh, the war's over. Uh, did you stay in? The no, I didn't. Uh, I was separated at Camp Blanding. I'm not certain of it. That's location now. I assume it was in Florida because that's where I started return to, mm -hmm. which uh, brings to mind a, a little extra story, which is has nothing to do with the military particularly, except that I was still in the military. My wife was pregnant with our daughter, who was instrumental in this interview, okay. <laughs> Dr. Gail Leishman, and uh, had a, a second-hand Packard sedan. And as I said, we had uh, houses for a year there in this housing development. And we packed up on the separation orders, we packed the car until it was riding barely off the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, at that time, tires were rationed, mm -hmm. as was fuel, gasoline. And uh, to add to the distractions, there was a light leak in my gasoline tank. Oh. Somebody gave me the hint at a garage that if you took Felsnaptha soap and took a wad of it and placed it over the uh, leak in the gasoline tank, it would hold until <laughs> at least your next gasoline fill. Hmm. And. Uh, did it somewhere work? In West, 
somewhere in West Florida uh, after dark. Uh, I had a flat tire. And this was by a gasoline station, but the gasoline station was closed. Hmm. Although there was a little room <laughs> to change a tire, but at that time you didn't worry about traffic anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, had to unload the car pretty well to even get the jack to fit under mm -hmm. the frame. And I jacked it up and changed the tire to a better looking smooth spare. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, reloaded and made our way to Tallahassee and checked into a hotel. We were on the second floor, it wasn't a large hotel, and uh, I was parked in front. And uh, of course my wife had morning sickness mm -hmm. at that stage of pregnancy. I looked out the front window at our vehicle, and lo, there was another flat tire. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, uh, did you find we, another uh, gas station? We got it repaired. <laughs> I, I didn't have two spares. <laughs> but uh, so it was just a nail in it or something. You could. Uh, I don't patch recall it. now what it was. Yeah. It possibly was just tired. <laughs> yeah. Tired tires. <laughs> well, that was when they had inner tubes, and those things wore out too. And right. Yeah. Those were but Those you were the days when you uh, slow them. down for a railroad crossing because you didn't want to pull the uh, valve on an inner tube. Right, yeah. <laughs> All kinds of things we've forgotten. <laughs> yeah. So you made it. Well, did they gas tank? Did oh, that, uh, well, that, that solution worked pretty well. It held it on? <laughs> uh, I, it, escapes me, it escapes me now whether I got the tank repaired uh, or not. But, uh, it held up long enough to get you to Florida. Huh? To Florida, and then uh, we drove from Florida to uh, Durham to her folks because under the GI Bill of Rights I decided I would take a, an extra year at Duke University uh, to gain a, a Navy degree and uh, to do that I had several science courses under my belt and uh, I majored in psychology at the time uh, to fulfill the requirements. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there I went to 35 years of farming. Of oh. course I had uh, learn that all, well, I had to learn it, period, because I was a child when I left. And so where where did you farm? Uh, on my father's farms in western New York. Oh, you went went back? Went back to, to western the, New York. Yeah, okay. So uh, did you uh, go into grain farming then? Uh, the things have changed a well, little bit, or did uh, you? We grew a, a variety of crops, uh, hay that we, sh mixture of Timothy and alfalfa hay that if it was good quality, uh, sold to a middleman that trucked it to the Re Roosevelt Raceway down by New York. And oh, feed the horses, huh? And uh, we raised sweet corn for a two cannon factories. One was Bird's Eye that was located in Mount Morris at the time. And one was Curtis Brothers Canning Company, which evident, uh, eventually uh, became a, a cooperative Agway branch. Hmm. So how big was your farm? Well, uh, the one we lived on was 130 acres, and uh, 
we re my uncle and I went in partnership and rented some uh, muck land on the, what we call the Groland Flats. And uh, what is what is muck land? <laughs> well, uh, it's so riverbed, rotted vegetation, and there were still old stumps that hadn't rotted. And, it was subject to flooding uh, okay. occasionally. Flooding. Lowlands. Low-lying land. Yeah. And uh, that was another experience <laughs> in itself. <laughs> so did you use that for uh, crops or hay? Uh, or just no, we just raised uh, canning crops there. And, uh, well, we did raise red kidney beans. Oh. And... Uh, that was one of the crops on the hill farms that we raised too. Black turtle soup beans, hmm. which are black beans, and that market was lost when uh, uh, Fidel Castro came to power uh, oh. in Cuba. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, So did you uh, have any more children? You had the daughter and... I had a daughter and son. Oh, okay. Just two. All right. My son is currently in uh, New Mexico now working in a hospital. Oh. Is he a doctor? Or? No, he's a... Uh, 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 supervisor capacity. Uh, oh, okay. Laboratory work. Okay. In fact, he commutes. He has. He owns a place in Colorado and also a place in uh, New Mexico, Taos, which is the primary job for him. Mm -hmm. And he commutes back and forth to work shifts. <laughs> no. <laughs> which is about a ninety-mile commute. <laughs> no. Well, that's. A not too bad, I guess. They no, it's not it. really all that bad. Yeah. And what? How about your daughter? Then she lives in Banning, is it? She lives in Palm Springs. Palm yeah. Springs. Oh, okay. I'm well, she lived in Santa Monica. Well, in uh, uh, what's the upscale? Uh, Pacific Palisades? Or? Brentwood. 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 Hmm? And what, what does she do? She's an oncologist. Oh. Okay. As well as her husband. Uh, they, so you, she became a they, doctor? They uh, lived and there in Brentwood, and then they went to uh, Roslyn Park in Buffalo, which was a prime oncology center. And then they... Uh, went to Albany and then they went back to California and Palm Springs. Okay. Which hospital is she working? Well, for years she just made the change this past spring. She was at uh, Desert Medical Regional Center. Okay. And what, what's her name? Dr. Uh, Cynthia Gale Leishman. Okay. Yeah. There was a change of faith then <laughs> involved uh, mm -hmm. along with the family life. Hmm. So uh, you have grandchildren too then? or I have uh, great-grandchildren, three great-granddaughters and one great-grandson, two years old. Hmm. Okay. In the terrible twos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're uh, spending some time with them now, huh? Yes, well, I've been visiting my daughter twice previous this year. Well, that's not true either. I guess one year was, one visit was 1910. 
My wife and I were married 68 years, but she had her problems, COPD and a heart problem. Mm. So she has passed? Pardon? She's passed away? She died uh, February uh, 26, 19, uh, 2010. Mm. I'm sorry. It's, uh, so is, is that when you moved to Texas or uh, how did no, you? No, we moved to Texas when uh, my son. I need to change the tape here. Hang on just a minute. Come on. I don't know that I can think of anything more anyway, but it would be. Okay, well, I'd like to finish it up here. But my little camera here is jammed. Try this again. Well. We may have to wing it. <laughs> this is uh, not. I have to confess, I don't like the sound of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it. <laughs> uh, well, but, uh, I think it's. I appreciate your putting up with it. I think it's quite pleasant, actually. I have no problem. But this thing is uh, is not doing what it's supposed to do. So I hope to. Uh, Recover it on the uh, oh, the uh, VCR here or the uh, DVD, I should say. So, anyhow, well, that's why we have duplication, I guess. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, uh, if there, I appreciate your help with the interviewing. Uh, I would have been hard pressed to. Uh, Elicit all this, all yeah. this talk. Well, it's, by it's, myself. it's many years, and uh, hard to remember all that stuff. Uh, you, you have limited storage. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that from the computers. You got to have a lot more storage to remember all those years. So, anyhow, I thought I think you did fine. Well, and, uh, I, I consider myself quite fortunate that I'm able to navigate at my age. Right. Uh, well, I want to thank you for your service to the country and thank you for spending time and uh, telling us of your history. It, uh, very interesting. Appreciate it. We'll, uh, I left out a recent development. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, we have a, in Tyler based a uh, grocery chain and whose name is Brookshire's. They have uh, a chain of groceries throughout East Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas. Hmm. And last October, I was fortunate enough to be one of 31 uh, war, World War II veterans to be uh, furnished a trip to Washington. Oh my. <laughs> and, uh, was this for the dedication of the World War II Memorial by chance? No, or, it wasn't no, for just... the dedication because it, it had already been uh, in uh, service for, okay. right. I for three or four years. But that's a magnificent uh, monument if you haven't seen it. Yes, I have seen it. it is, you have seen it? Yes. Yeah. It's, there's getting to be a lot of monuments around there to uh, it really makes it interesting and historical tour to see all those things. And uh, our uh, local congressman, uh, Louis Gohmert, guided us through the Capitol building and mm. gave us a, a the the Congress was at recess at that time when we mm -hmm. were there and uh, he gave a very interesting and informative talk about 
various locations of buildings, the rooms in the buildings and the uh, oversized paintings <laughs> that are in the rotunda there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great place. Uh, I was uh, fortunate to be able to uh, work the work in D.C. for a couple of years. So oh, really? we didn't see it all, but uh, we got to spend some time there. It's a great place. I love it. My daughter lives in Alexandria, so we have an excuse to go back every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. That's a great tour. So, okay. Well, now, wrap it up. Uh, okay, we'll uh, turn this off here.